okay, I'm doing this completely without notes, so I'm going to do this all from memory. So let's start off with Revelation chapter 16, please. Revelation chapter 16. Okay. There we go. Three books. That's, right. That's a good one. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, right? That's a good one. All right, we'll turn to Revelation chapter 16, please. And what we're going to talk about here in this particular video is uh, concerning Daniel's 70th uh, week. So you're going to go to Daniel chapter 12 as well. You're going to turn to Daniel chapter 12. Now here's the thing is that a lot of prophecy scholars, a lot of preachers, they were always trying to wonder what the extra days were. Because what you're going to find out is that we see Daniel's 70th week here. And then in, <coughs> excuse me, in this entire 70th week, this is the tribulation timeline. That's what majority of preachers and Bible scholars know and acknowledge. So we have many different people in ex eschatology. There is a pre-trib rapture, that's us, and you have the post-trib rapture. Then you got the mid-trib rapture. And then you got the amillennials, and then you can also put postmillennial, but you don't have to know all that, okay? Point is this, point is, it doesn't matter which eschatology you believe in, we all agree uh, concerning the 70th week thing. So concerning the 70th week, we agree that in the midst, that's where the abomination of desolation occurs, which is Daniel 9, 27, in the middle of it. But now the question is this. The question is, there seems to be an extra amount of days that goes beyond that, that goes beyond it. So it's not just, it doesn't end with 70th and then goes down to the millennium, which is 1,000 years. Oh, i got plenty of space here. Wow. Okay. So 1,000 years, that's the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. Here at the second advent is when he comes down and sets up his millennial kingdom. The 70th week does not end like that. There's an extra amount of days here, actually. So this is wondered among Bible scholars. Now, I don't profess that I know 100% what it is, but I certainly can tell you it's not going to support uh, the post-trib and the mid-tribbers' arguments. So we're going to explain right here with Revelation chapter 16, and then we're going to start off at verse 15. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. So notice right here, God's telling them, blessed are you that wait and watch, because of some rapture happening. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. Okay, so this is referring to Armageddon. So we do know that somewhere around here is Armageddon, when Jesus Christ comes down and then conquers his enemies. But the question now here is this. Well, before I discuss the question, it mentions right here, notice that they're preparing for Armageddon, but there are people waiting for a rapture. So, yes, we do believe in a post-trib rapture. We do believe in that. Amen. But the post-trib rapture is not for us. Amen. It's trib, right? So this is for tribulation saints, not Christian saints. This one, the pre-trib rapture, is for Christian saints. So I showed you in many videos on that, so I'm not going to do it again. So right here is the pre-trib rapture is for the church. And then we see another rapture right here sometime at the end of the tribulation. And that's going to be the post-trib rapture. Now, so there are people waiting and watching. And they're preparing for Armageddon right there. Now compare that with Daniel 12. See, go to Daniel 12. Now we're going to find out what's going on here and the confusion. We're going to go to Daniel chapter 12, and we're going to see the extra days here, Daniel 12. We're going to start off at Daniel chapter 12 and verse 11. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up. So remember, the abomination is the middle of the 70th week, the middle of the tribulation, right? So from here, what's going on? There shall be 1,290 days. Okay, so then there's going to be 1,290 days. But guess what? There's an extra amount of days here. So remember this gap right here? There's going to be an extra amount of days here. 
what is this extra amount of days? So let's keep reading right here. Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. So notice right here, one thousand three hundred and thirty five days. Okay? So we got an extra gap here of one thousand three hundred and thirty five days. Now, this is what some mid-trib rapture proponents will teach. Now, you might remember in my previous video, I was telling you that uh, these mid-trib rapture people, they profess they're going to be raptured in the middle of the tribulation, but then there's an extra 75 days, right? I mentioned that in last week's video. And then I mentioned where they get that from, out of thin air. So it is out of thin air they put that. But there are some out there who do mention what these days are. Okay, so where they get those extra days are from here, see? So what they believe is this. What they believe is in this first half here is going to be 1,335 days. So thus, it reaches to the, this gap here of the 75. Thus, see that? Just 75 days after the middle of the tribulation, then they get raptured. However, what I argue is this, is that this is not the first half here, okay? So this is not going to work. It's going to be the second half here, right here, the 1,335 days. You might uh, ask me, why is that, preacher? The reason why is, look at verse 11, the context. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the what? Abomination, abomination that maketh desolate set up. See that? Remember, the abomination is where? Right here, right? From this time, what happens? Keep reading verse 11. 1,290 days. See that? But then God's telling you, instead of those days, blessed are you if you wait for the 1,335 days instead. So see that? So it's from this abomination, you go 1,290, but God is saying, blessed are you if you go up to the 1,335. Mm -hmm. See that? So there's no doubt it has to be over here. But not only that, here's another problem. Another problem is if you look at the book of Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. And I also want you to go to Revelation 16 again. All right, We're going to keep going to Revelation 16. Go to Luke 12 and then go to Revelation 16 once more. Look at Luke chapter 12. And then you're going to find out right here that at verse 37, uh, we'll start at verse 36 so we can know the context, verse 36. And ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord. Remember that waiting and watching, blessed are you that wait and watch, so it's talking about that rapture. But keep reading. Uh, that wait for their Lord when he will return. See that? When the Lord comes down for them at the rapture. But he will return from what? The wedding. The wedding. So he returns from the wedding. Meaning that there was already a wedding, a marriage going on up in heaven. So this proves pre-trib rapture. You Amen. see that? You might say, why is that? So I discussed it a lot oh, yeah, in the previous good. video, so I'll just make this quick. Because Jesus Christ has to marry the whole, he has to marry the church, right? Uh -huh. He has to marry the church. How can he marry the church if the church is down here? Mm -hmm. So it. he's returning from the wedding. Mm -hmm. This proves two raptures, see that? So the church has to be up there, and then he's going to pick up the other people who get saved in the tribulation. See? So they're going to be going up. So in this waiting and watching the rapture, look at verse 37. <laughs> Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find, notice, watching. See that? That matches with Revelation 16, verse 15, right? Blessed are you that watch. Okay, so there's no doubt it's the same thing, okay? It's talking about sometime over here. Blessed are you that watch. And when is that? Close to Armageddon, see that? So the people who argue that you're going to be going through right here, and then 75 days later you get raptured, that doesn't work. Because it has to be close to the brink of Armageddon here that they're raptured up. See that? So that, that's why this argument falls apart with this one. See, it doesn't work. It makes more sense to put it right here. But not only that, these people, they claim this. We argue that the tribulation is God's wrath. That's what we argue. 
That's our proof for a pre-trib rapture because Christians are not appointed unto wrath, according to 1 Thessalonians 5. However, these people, what they would like to claim is that this second half, okay, so remember the middle of the 70th week, they like to claim the first half is the tribulation, the second half is the wrath. So, you know, we're not going to go through the wrath, but we will still go through the tribulation, they argue. So they will argue they will still go through the tribulation, and then 75 days after that, then they go up, and then the wrath. That's what they argue. But that is foolish argument. The reason why is this. is because this wrath, Revelation 16, it says, Blessed is he that watcheth, right? That's a rapture. That matches with Luke 12, right? The rapture. That's at the brink of Armageddon, right? You're already at what? If you look at the very next verse, verse 17, it's the seventh vial of God's wrath. Look back at verse 12. When God said, Blessed are you that watch and ready for the rapture, already in verse 12, the sixth vial of God's wrath was already poured out. And if you look at verse 1, verse 1, God was pouring out the vials of wrath already. So you see that when these people are waiting for their post-trib rapture, they're already going Amen. through six or how many vials of God's wrath already. Amen. Oh, wow. See? So that's why this argument of this 75 days thing, it's not going to work. Another thing is this. Why it would be more logical to put this gap right here is this. Look at Revelation 20 and Matthew 25. Now look at Revelation 20 and Matthew 25. Look at two passages, two passages. Matthew 25 and Revelation 20. Pastor, I haven't turned to that many scriptures in all my life. Oh, see, that's the reason why a lot of churches are going into wrong doctrine and apostasy. Amen, that's true. See that? It's because they don't search and study the scriptures. you got to realize this. These doctrines don't just come out in three easy verses. Yeah. These are developed through much study of the scripture. See that? No wonder Jesus said, search the scriptures. No wonder Jesus said, study to show thyself approved to God. Now, <coughs> look at Revelation 20 <coughs> and Matthew 25. <coughs> Matthew 20, uh, excuse me, Revelation 20, verse 4, verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. To who? The tribulation saints. And I saw that souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. Well, that's definitely the tribulation saint. And for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. Those are definitely tribulation saints. Notice that they received what? Thrones first. They received judgment first. And then started the clock of what? Keep reading verse 4. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So look at this. So this would make sense about the extra days. After the end of the tribulation, he don't start the clock of 1,000 years like that. It's until they receive their rewards, mm. see? It's until they finish their judgment, see that? Until God finishes with that, and there's like billions of people around the world, so he has to finish all that first. Until he finishes that, then we can start the clock of the 1,000 years. That's what the verse said, right? They reigned a thousand years, right? They can't reign until they get their what? Judgment and throne. So that's when it starts the clock, see? So thus we can understand the little bit of time gap right here, all right? Nobody knows 100% what, what, why there's a time gap, but it is very logical to think that, you know, after God wipes out uh, all the nations, it's going to take some time to clean up the mess that the devil polluted throughout all the all the world. And you got like 8 to 10 billion people, okay? That's a lot of cleanup to do, okay? Right. I mean, after the world wars, how long did it take for a nation to recover its economy, right? So it's going to take time. It's going to take time. But also look at Matthew 25. Matthew 25. There is a judgment as soon as he ends the tribulation. As soon as the tribulation ends, he starts his judgment. Look at Matthew 25, 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered, notice, all nations. See, that he's going to have a long judgment. That would take longer time. Uh, that's a longer uh, group of people than the judgment seat of Christ. You see that? It's going to be a lot of people. 
and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And then verse 34, Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, so after he finishes judging them, what does he tell these people? Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the what? Kingdom prepared for you from what? The foundation of the world. See that? Until he can judge them, then he gives them, then you can inherit that kingdom on the world. See that? So thus it makes sense that this time gap right here could be that judgment at Matthew 25. Judgment of nations. Judgment of nations. So thus we see right here that it is that this weird thing that they come up with like 75 days right over here and then, then you go up, that really messes up the rest of the scriptures. You saw Luke 12, you saw Revelation 16, you saw Matthew 25 and Revelation 20 and Daniel 12 itself. It shows by context, scripture with scripture, and if you read the verse as it says, it's better to put it at the latter half. And it doesn't matter what it is, you can't argue for a mid-trip rapture for the church. That does not make sense, Amen. going through God's wrath.